I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Pleasure to have you here with us in London for the Film Festival. If you could begin with a brief introduction to your film, what can people expect when they watch it? OK, I'm James Erskine. This is Rachel Ramsey. We together directed Copa 71, which is the story of an unofficial Women's World Cup that took place in 1971 that's been uh, buried, buried from history for 50 years, and yet at the final, the Azteca Stadium in Mexico was 120,000 people, which to this day is the largest uh, 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 crowd at a women's sporting event. Um, and we tell that story that's been forgotten and hopefully uh, reclaim it so it's, it's never forgotten again. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about the genesis of the project. I mean, it's absolutely, it's almost impossible to believe that the story has le been left untold. Um, how did you first come across it and decide, right, this needs to be done? Um, we first came across it when our producer, Victoria, um, had heard about it um, through a radio interview um, with the, one of the six teams that took part, which was the England team, or as they were known, the British Independents at the time. Um, they had uh, just reunited after not talking to each other for 50 years. And so BBC Radio was doing a little piece on this. Um, there had been an amazing amount of research done by a BBC journalist, and they um, and, and, so, and it really was a question like, okay, this story really hasn't been told yet. Um, as a team, we've researched and worked on, developed, made um, extensive sport, sports-related feature, feature docs, and so we kind of think that we should, if anyone know about this story, and absolutely didn't. And we've got one like little soundbite we like to use, which say that you know. There was no Wikipedia entry on this tournament. It didn't exist online, pretty much. The only place it existed was in the memories of the women we spoke to and some of the memorabilia that they had brought back from Mexico in 1971. What did that research process then look like? I guess, like you say, it had something to start from, from this BBC journalist. Yeah. But I guess, like, having to almost be from a blank slate, mm -hmm. how long did that all take? And what were some of the challenges and highlights along the way? I mean, we were working, we were working on the, the development process for um, a year or so before we um, were putting together a treatment, finding all of the women who participated in the tournament. So that was the most important thing. That's the kind of film, you know, the kind of film that we want to want to put together is directly from the emotional journey and the and the um, and the the memories of the women who lived it who lived it directly. And you know, I guess what might have been something you could have taken from all the other documentaries we've worked on and you sort of had a familiarity in the area but what might have been new for, for this particular topic um i guess what was new about this is that it, it genuinely wasn't a topic that anyone knew anything about and it was it was an event that was so big that we we really had to see the original the, the evidence that this existed and a lot of that came actually directly out of um, archives in mexico when we found um, still photographs footage uh, newspaper coverage of the tournament itself and at that point you, sort of, you can't deny that it exists but there, there's no book to base this on so really the whole project was original research done by a team of, like, um, of amazing researchers, archivists from around the world. Yeah. And making that decision I suppose about what to include, what not to include, did you sort of have reams and reams you had to then whittle down? Yeah I mean the, the, there's thousands of different stories that come out of this tournament. I think, you know, because we were going at it first, what we wanted to really uh, convey is the experience of the whole tournament, to show what it was really like, how big it really was. That's what had been denied and an easy way of denigrating it. We wanted to show the whole thing, but also we wanted to show it as a movement. Most sporting films and most sporting films that we've made are told from the perspective of one team, the team you want to root for, the classic hero sports story. For this, we wanted to be very, and we were very careful and balanced in the edit to make sure that by the end of the film, you know, you're not rooting for one team or the other. You know, the actual outcome is interesting to watch, but actually the greater victory is the victory that we see on the Azteca Stadium where 120,000 people crowd in to watch Denmark play Mexico and they play a brilliant game of football. What must it have meant to these women that you kind of came in and, and dug up their story and you're now presenting it to the world. It must have been very touching for them. Um, yeah, a lot of them, when we first got in touch, were quite sceptical. Um, they were also quite nervous. They were also... Yeah. I mean, they, they were reticent because 50 years ago they were shamed into 
believing that what they'd done was wrong. Well, after this huge success that they all felt and they all experienced together, they went back to their individual countries and it was taken away from them. The trauma of that was very real. The trauma of being gaslit for 50 years and told that a memory they had didn't exist and it didn't happen um, was, 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 was delicate and difficult for us to work through. So you spent the, what you do, the process is, is, is winning over someone's trust, earning their trust, sharing something of yourselves with them, getting to know the women, spending time with them before you, any, before you ever go near them with a the camera, and then and asking them if they will kindly share their story. And the generosity that they all gave by the end, after you know, a long time building up those relationships, was extraordinary, and that's what makes the film what it is. Mm -hmm. And how have you found the reaction so far? And what do you hope that the impact of the film will be? Um, well, we, we've only had a, we've only had a few um, uh, a few screenings so far, um, and I mean we've been blown away by the reactions. So it feels that the emotional journey that we wanted to take the audience on, that we felt was what the story is deserving, um, has yeah, has has really has really come across, and it comes across on the screen. Um, and, the, and it comes across in the reaction from the audience, from the women themselves, which honestly right now is the most important thing. We're having the opportunity to show the women this, this film for the first time um, and put their, give, give the, the main point we want to do is to give them back a voice that was taken away from them 50 years ago. And there they are on screen telling their own story, mixed up languages, like all between each other, all the different teams, and it's one big collective experience and that's what we were looking for. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the one thing we haven't really talked about is the humour. There's a lot <laughs> yeah. of humour, and, and, and the, the, you know, these, these, these are wonderful women, many of them are very these, funny. These women are very funny, they're great crack. You know, and I think, they, you know, the film is, you know, as much as we can be worthy as documentarians, what we wanted to create was an entertainment first and, and, and the education second. And I think, you know, what's amazing is seeing it when we saw it for the first time in an audience in Toronto, and again, this, uh, uh, the, the, third, the third time last night at London Film Festival, you know, was to actually see how the audience were engaged with the with the characters yeah. and how they they fell in love with them, and that was that was wonderful because these women deserve to be loved by us all. Yeah. Is it pretty mad in a way? Because for some stories you can say, oh, well, this was 50 years ago, but of course, you know, things have really progressed since then. <laughs> I mean, just even you know the, the debate that seemed to be still going on this year about watching the women's football. Why is it that for some reason, you know, other sports you don't have that same um, people, the sense of people dragging their feet in terms of accepting that, hey, it's men, it's women, does it matter? It's just playing the sport. Why are we so behind the times on, on this particular thing? Um, you mean specifically in football? Women's football, yeah. Why is women's football so far behind? I think, you know, football is as a sport is so universal um, and the universality of it reflects the establishment, reflects the world we're living in. It's a brilliant lens to look at what's going on and and how individual individuals and nations and organizations are reacting to the world. You can use football as an example of that. If things are not changing as fast as we want them to, and if you can, you can see that, I mean, that's, that's, that's why we're telling the story. And it, it, it's set 50 years ago, but as you can see when you watch it, it and as we know, it, it's, it's it's all incredibly relevant. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting debate because, of course, uh, with the exception of tennis, probably, uh, all women's sport is seen as second place, and it's a struggle to play. It's a struggle for women rugby players to play, women cricket players to play. In the Olympics, the the men's 100 metres is given more prominence than the women's uh, uh, spin racing. So, I think this story this applies across the whole of the whole of the sport. And f football has actually done is becoming more progressive and is leading the charge to some extent, but it's still you know decades behind where it should be. Yeah. And does it after this year though? Does it feel like oh we're finally getting those numbers up, the funding, the audiences, the stadiums? Are we seeing it change finally? I mean, I think going back to to this 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 film and this tournament as a reference, you know, we always said if if you build it, they will come. So yes, if matches are are getting airtime, if tournaments are getting funding, if grassroots is getting funding, then yes, obviously it's going to start building up. But none of that can be taken for granted, and that's the other thing we really feel about this film. There's a yeah, as you said, well, the invest the investment needs yeah. to be much more like. Of course, it's got to the be Euros, there. it's the World Cup, you can tub something nation, but the yeah. investment's got to be there every week for, 
the WSL for like yeah. uh, teams across for, the country. For, girl, for girls playing at school, it's got to you know the, the, the drop off of girls playing um, when they hit puberty is enormous. So there's not an, like, this is something we need to keep keep moving forward on and addressing it on every level. And finally, you know, what does it mean to to, to have it here uh, at the London Film Festival? I mean, I saw at the premiere you had like all the, the women there. That must have just been such a nice moment. I, yeah, it's, it's an absolute honour to be here at BFI London Film Festival. Um, it's a sort of it's a, a, yeah, a home ground for us, and having all the women from, as they were known, the British Independents, because they weren't allowed to be the official England team, but you know, from the English team with us in the cinema last night, and all their family and friends seeing themselves on screen for the first time. I mean, that was it was enormous. I think it's still landing for all of us actually. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much thank for sharing you. all that with me. I'm really enjoying presenting your film here. Thanks a lot.